So conflict. Um, we're going to talk about conflict today and compassion and creativity. And what a better place than conflict to uh, enjoy some compassion and to practice it. And yet, how often do we do that uh, when we're in a real conflict? And that sort of leads me into asking you uh, to all to just think of a conflict that's going on for you right now. Could be a big one. Could be a life event. It could be a family member, the ones that are um, really important to you, but for some reason it's difficult to communicate with. It could be a coworker. It could be uh, a friend. It could be anything. It could be a decision you're trying to make. Could be that kind of internal difficulty. How many have one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I'm not the only one then. <laughs> Yeah, just because I teach this stuff, right, doesn't mean that uh, I don't have it in my own life. In some ways, I think that conflict is a lifelong practice. It's something that we get better at if we want to, right? It's also something that we can just do the same thing over and over and over again without uh, thinking, you know, and, and, and looking back and saying, wow, I can't believe I did that again. Uh, and yet we don't change because we don't practice something else. So one of my messages always, whether I have 45 minutes or uh, two days, is that we are what we practice and that we can decide to practice new things. <laughs> <laughs> I love Raya, she's so great. <laughs> 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 we sat over at Profile, you know, the coffee bar um, and in Portsmouth, and uh, they interviewed me. And the whole time I was talking to Kurt, she's like, snip, snap, snap, snap. <laughs> and when she wasn't, I was like, where's the snapping? You know? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, we are what we practice. And so today is an opportunity for you to, I hope, reinforce some things you're already practicing. And if not, um, and you want to, that maybe you'll pick up some practices that, y that you want to uh, incorporate into your life. Myself, I've been practicing this stuff for uh, 34 years. I've been teaching it for 24 years. Uh, as Genev said, the company is called Power and Presence Training. So you can tell what I'm interested in. How do we become more powerful in those difficult moments when we're under pressure? How do we regain our presence? How do we regain ourselves and not lose ourselves to the difficulty, to the conflict, to the other person, to whatever it is that's going on? So the idea behind Aikido and why it's a little different from the other arts is that it's about blending and redirecting, right? So that's me blending with Al and then redirecting the energy into his body as he falls. And um, I'll, I'll give you a little example of that in a minute, but I, I wanted you to see it first um, uh, with somebody who doesn't know Aikido, for example. Now, I should say, I, I have this little bell in my hand. Um, it's a very little important, it's an important bell because we are going to be doing things together. It's not just me talking to you for the next half hour. It's uh, you getting up and trying some of these practices out, okay? Does it sound like fun? I hope so. It's not enough, is it, to read books or listen to a speaker to really change these hardwired habits that we have in our bodies. That part of the learning is letting our body try something else and then like go, oh, wow, this is how I behave when I'm, you know, with so-and-so, or this is how I would like to behave when I'm with so-and-so. So these, um, these particular uh, activities that I have in mind today will help you to build these in, in a cellular way, you know, in, in a cellular level. Um, the bell, when you hear it, I'll ring it now, it's just a little reminder to center, to come back to you, right? Because you'll be like talking to the other person. Like, Take a breath and center, and I'll just ring it right now so you can hear it. That's what today's about. That feeling that you have right now, presence, the being here now not worried about what's next or what happened yesterday. Okay, anybody want to be my first volunteer? There'll be at least one other opportunity. Yay! Come. Is, it, is it the backflip thing we saw in the Yeah! Exactly. <laughs> I mean, just go grab the mat. Yeah. Just as long as I'm not broken. Yeah. <laughs> 
Nobody's going to fall down, unless you want to. I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> as, long as, as long as I don't break anything, I'm good. It's nice to meet you. Is it Scott? Yes. Nice to meet you. Very Captain nice Awesome, you. is that what it says? Yes. Excellent. Thank you so much for volunteering. Hey, I'm ready to try something new. Are you a martial, <laughs> are you a martial artist? Have you no, done any? No, okay. not at all. Okay. Yeah, do you, have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being my partner. Yep. Okay, um, so I'm gonna, are you right-handed? Yes. I'm going to ask you to just like you're going to throw a punch towards my face, but slow motion for now, okay? <laughs> so this is what you might expect, right? A block, and then you expect what's next, right? <laughs> yeah, and he, that's right, and he doesn't want to get hit, so he's going to block. So this is what we're sort of used to, not only in physical combat, but in life. So for example, right, everything we do physically today, we're going to add some like verbal or some other application that we can use out there in, in life. So uh, this time, Captain Awesome, yes. if you would, exactly. with that punch, if you would say, that's a stupid idea. So yeah. that's a stupid idea? No, it isn't. It's a great idea. What are you talking about, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So we, and this is life, right? We, they don't even, we don't even let them get the whole thought out before we've made a, a conclusion and decided that they're wrong. So Aikido looks like this. So here we go with the punch again, if you would. Yeah. Right short. Right. Yeah. Aikido might do this, right? Aikido might do, let's do it again. Aikido might do this, right? Notice when, right, I have his energy, I can do things with it, okay? <laughs> um, especially when you have a nice partner who's a good sport. Okay, but let's go, let's go again. And I'm gonna step in again, go ahead okay. and punch toward me, right? So here, notice, right, here, it's kind of a contest. Here, it's like, who's gonna win this? It could be either one of us, probably, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He has a lot of strength here. But here, right, look what a power position I'm in, right? And look how I have also control over him because he's lost his balance a little bit, expecting resistance, but instead getting this. Now, I could hurt him. Here's his neck, his back. I could do some damage, okay? But then Scott's going to be very unhappy, right? And you watch what happens to unhappy people around you, right? They're not fun, okay? If, if you, like, if I want to win this contest and show him that I have more power than him, okay, that might, I might win for a little while, but he might be back tomorrow with a couple of other people or with a bad <laughs> attitude, right? So um, either way. Now, so what Aikido does, the goal of Aikido is to render the attack harmless without harming the attacker. That's our goal, right? Nice, huh? So I stay safe and so does he. So the idea here is that I, I give him some energy because he's giving me some. So let's come, let's come again. Here's that energy. Thank you very much is what I'm thinking, right? Thank you very much, and here's some for you, okay? And, <laughs> and I, know, I know you're laughing, but uh, in a minute, um, Jonathan has uh, agreed to come up and actually take a couple of falls. So uh, you'll actually see that falling is not losing in Aikido. Falling is an option that we take because if you resist, right, yep. it's going to hurt. And if I push hard enough, right, it's going to hurt in a lot of different places. So we learn how to take falls. Yeah, don't resist now. I don't okay. want to hurt you. So we learn how to take falls in ways that receives. So I receive. I say thank you. Here's some for you. He receives, and he gets up again. And we fall and get up about 150 times a night. And we learn through that process what? What do we learn? How not to fall next time. <laughs> Actually, what do we learn? Yeah, it's about getting up and how, how to not be so worried about falling down anymore. So we're not so worried about the conflict anymore because we can sort of handle ourselves. So now let's do it with words, okay? So right. stupid idea. Stupid idea. So what am I going to say? Let's ask them. What am I going to say to um, Scott? What, is the, what might be the verbal Aikido here? What's a better idea? Yeah, what's a better idea? What's another one? Why is it stupid? Why is it stupid? What didn't you like? Can you be more specific? Tell me more. Right? Anything, right? Because Aikido, right, first, first principle, let's go again. Okay. Is <laughs> Say something again. No, 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 just a hit. First, pr first principle is get, don't be there. Okay? Get out yeah. of the way. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty good principle. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A second principle, let's go again. So get out of the way and then embrace the energy. And the way that we do this in life, if you're a curious person, you're probably practicing Aikido a lot because you're asking a lot of questions. When someone says stupid idea, you're going to say, why? Because where are we more likely to solve the problem? Here? No, it's not. It's a great idea. Or here, tell me more, Scott. Yeah. Right? Of course, the second way. All right, thank you so much.
So just a little bit, because I don't always have this luxury um, to have someone who actually knows Aikido and who's very skilled at it. And uh, thank you. So Jonathan's going to just uh, very slow motion so they can see the fall and everything. So let's do that same thing that Scott just did, okay, a ski. Right, so here, thank you very much. And then here's some for him. And he get, falls down and he gets up again. Now he didn't get hurt at all. I know, he's fine, you know, and this is a hard floor. At Portsmouth Aikido, we actually have mats that are softer and it's a lot easier. So uh, let's do, uh, again, same, same attack. So remember I stepped in, right, here. I've got his balance here, right? So the way Aikido got changed, it was invented by a man named Morihei Washiba in the early part of the 20th century. And he said, you know, we can take other martial arts and change them subtly so we don't have to kill the person. Okay, this is a kill blow right here to the larynx. But we could just change it subtly so we control them, right, without harming. And he's going to fall down again. Yeah, okay. So, and that's what you see over and over again. So maybe, um, I'll shoot you up one new cheese. So right here, and here's what I was doing with Al in the, right, it's so good. And one more, um, just anything. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. And there we go. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like for you to have an experience of moving from a resistant stance to a connected one. So. This is what it's going to look like when you do it. So look in the left-hand side of that picture, right? And then look at the right. So this is what we're going to practice doing. So let's, I need a partner, though. Kathleen, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Judy. So Kathleen, if you just put your hand on mine. Go ahead. Good. So why are you pushing? Oh. No, no. <laughs> it's okay. I expected it. I thought we were supposed it. to start. <laughs> I expected it. I expected it. So, but notice I said, why, just put your hand on mine, right? And she started pushing. Why did she start pushing? Because I'm pushing. Exactly, right? I mean, this is the way conflict develops without our even, oh, no awareness. Think of it, right? And the harder I push, the harder Kathleen pushes. It just happens. And so the harder I resist, whatever it is, I, she might be saying, this is a stupid idea, and I'm saying, no, it's not. And she's saying, yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And the more we fight, the more um, energy gets added to this conflict here. So, and she, of course, I'm pushing back and she's pushing back because we think we only have two choices. Watch, push real hard. I think if I don't push back, this is going to happen. And I don't want to get walked on, right? I don't want people to roll over me, so I'm going to push back. Now, think of Aikido always as the third choice, okay? Watch. So she's going to push now, and I'm going to do what? What am I going to do? That's right. Step in. What we want to learn is how do I recognize the resistance place in myself and move to a more connected one. So in the book that someone got, this is called Moving from Resistance to Connection. Okay. And then I'm going to move, right? Because I can now. She's given me all this great energy so I can lead and then I can go in her direction for a while and then I can turn her around. You know, once and for maybe, <laughs> maybe she's going to see, right? She's going to see something new. So when we do this, when we move to a more side-by-side -side place, you can look too if you want. So we need, so th this is just an example of maybe a workplace scenario, right? The owner says, we need to bill you more for this project, right? So say that to me. We need to bill you more for this project. We agree to a fee. If, if it took longer, that's your fault. Go ahead, you're lying. You didn't give us enough. You didn't give us enough information up front. Well, you didn't tell us everything you needed, right? So we could stay here for a while, right? So now, this might be more like this, right? So sometimes it's questioning, curiosity. Sometimes it's acknowledgment. You know, in what ways could we have been clearer up front, right? By describing okay. what the challenges might be. How do you see this resolving? What would be your ideal? Yeah. Okay, so notice that acknowledgement, curiosity, we, we tend to not go there because we equate it with agreement, don't we? You think that, oh, well, what, what, if they, what if they say something, what if Kathleen says something that Judy doesn't want to do, right? Well, then I still have options, right? I can still find out more. So acknowledgement does not equal agreement. Listening does not mean I have to do what she says. But notice when I do that how it diffuses, right? The stress, the pressure has somewhere to go. And have you ever listened to someone long enough that they change their own mind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
this is what can happen. Not always, but this is what can happen because we give people an opportunity to reflect on their thinking. And if this isn't about compassion, I don't know what is. When I say this is about compassion, uh, it's about empathy, which is about compassion. And it's also about compassion for ourselves because conflict is not easy. I've been teaching this for 24 years and I still have a lot of difficult conflicts that take me a while. You know, to move from this place, ah, this feels so good sometimes, doesn't it? I mean, at least it feels like I'm doing something, right? I know. You know, all that pressure, all that energy, all that, yeah, I'm right. I know I'm right. And a lot of times I actually am right. So, so I mean, why wouldn't I stay there? Because eventually they'll see my point, won't they? <laughs> yeah, you get the point here. The more I push, the harder they push. They're never going to change usually unless they really love me or something. I mean, they're usually not going to change for me. They're usually going to change because they see something else and because I let them see something else and I don't get in their way. Anna, would you be my partner on this one? Because Anna's my other student that's here. So we'll just show it again. So, and, and if you would, if you'd bow to your partner first like we did, because what does the bowing represent? Yeah, yeah. And how important is that in conflict, difficult conversations? Tough, right? So, and then you're going to put your hand up, and it needs to be the right and the right or the left and the left, depending on where you're at. It doesn't really matter. Just as long as it's across the body, one of you will start pushing, and the other one will just automatically start pushing back. You'll just notice that. You'll feel the resistance, and then you decide with each other who's going to step in first. So, I'll say, like, and I'll step in first, and then you just feel what that's like. It doesn't take much space. You can probably just kind of do it where you're standing almost. And then um, I'll do that a couple of times, right? And then I'll say, okay, and you step in, right? No. And I'll keep pushing, right? And you want to keep pushing because it's just fun for your partner when you fall over. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't have to worry that they're going to fall over because you keep pushing this time because you're supporting them here, right? Mm -hmm. And notice what I'm not doing. Go ahead. I'm not going... <laughs> okay? I'm not pulling her. I'm not coercing her. I'm not pushing her. I'm just getting out of the way. But because there's so much energy there, that's what happens. Okay? That's the cool thing. So we have more power than we think in conflict. It's just not always where we think it is. It's not about changing Enna. It's about changing me. That's where the power is. Because right? when I change, everything changes. The dance changes. That's the coolest part of Aikido. Thank you, Anna. Talk with the partner that you were with, if you're near them, or if not, just turn to the person next to you, um, or three of you, or however you want to do it, and answer these, kinds, these two questions. What three? What similarities do you find between the physical sensation of resistance and the resistance you feel from difficult people in your life, or a specific difficult person? Where and how are you pushing back? You know, this doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just means that conflict, one of the myths about conflict and one of the sort of overriding and under foundational things about it is that we treat it as a contest. And it's just what life shows us. We see it everywhere. So how could we not do it? So just start to notice. That's the first trick, if you will, about practice, is to notice when you're doing something that you don't really want to do consciously. So how are you pushing back? And how could you change the dynam dynamic? Usually it's about asking a question that you don't know the answer to, that helps you see something that they're seeing that you're not. Or it's an acknowledgment. This sounds really difficult. This seems really hard. It seems like you're really upset. Can you tell me more? You know, those kinds of things. Okay. Um, by the way, if, if you like this, what we're doing today, there are a lot more of those kinds of activities where we change our energy and we change ourselves and everything changes um, and practices. And I have a website, judybringer.com, that is pretty t a teaching website. I like to think of it as you can get on that website and you can just you know, pretty much download, I have like probably 15 articles you can download and, and I have a blog and, and stuff like that so that you can go there and get a lot of this stuff from my website is what I'm saying. But also, if you like this, I do give public workshops from time to time. So uh, get on my uh, blog and my newsletter and, and you'll hear about those things, okay? Because um, what I want to finish up by saying is it's about this. 
This comes from my desk, okay? And I, uh, I actually remember to look at the pictures sometimes. I mean, and 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 what I wrote down. I actually remember to, to do to do my own practices. Because I was uh, speaking with Noel just a minute ago, and she said, you know, it's like it, it's so counterintuitive, and yet it's so. What was the second word? Freeing. Freeing to step off of that pressure and move in, right? And I love that c combination, counterintuitive and freeing. Because she said, everything in me wants to just keep that pressure on. Y can you relate to that? <laughs> and, and, she, and she was like, I'm supposed to step toward them? OK. And I love that, the way you said that, because it's like, yeah, you know, that's the only way this is going to change. Our world is going to change. Our relationships are going to change. I tend to work on a relational level. That if this relationship isn't working out, how can I change so that it can be different? Because I can't expect that other person to change. And she also said, very t intuitive, that Noelle, it, is she said, you know, that means that I have to decide to do it, mm. right? <laughs> I have to, first of all, notice that I'm not doing it, that I'm continuing to apply pressure. And then I have to decide what do I want to do, right? Do I want to keep putting the pressure on or do I want to move in and see their point of view and lead? Because when you do that, you become a leader. And that really is the practice. And it's a simple practice of centering. I'm pretty sure everybody in this room knows what I'm talking about when I say that word. How do you do it? It's different for different people. Um, and mostly, you know it when you experience it. It's what you experienced when you heard the bell. Okay? So I want you to think about your conflict again. And I'm going to ring the bell. And I want you to center yourselves as you think about the conflict. And sort of bring the conflict like side by side with you so that you feel a little more in control of yourself and the conflict. So this place, centering, is a place of purpose, is a place of your highest and best self. So when you catch yourself resisting, when you catch yourself about to be triggered or getting triggered, you want to go, wow, thank you so much for that <laughs> awareness, right? It's because now I can make a choice. And now I can make a different choice, if you want to, OK? Because I know that resistance is kind of fun sometimes. <laughs> So I think I might have just maybe one more slide, and then we'll open it up for questions. Oh, yeah, just a couple more. Just This is how we move from an adversarial quality in our relationships to a more partnering one, where we begin to solve problems and move toward purpose. Thank you.